After a much long wait, Final Girl Series 2 is finally here. Today we'll be unboxing all the new stuff for returning Series 1 people, as well as all the new feature films and goodies in Series 2. After playing through everything, I'll be working on a buying guide to break down all of the mechanics in the Series 2 boxes and help you decide which one you might want to get first if you're not going to get all of them. So be sure to subscribe if you want more Final Girl content in the future. So without further ado, let's get started with the unboxing. All right, so to get us started, we have the Series 1 storage box here. So you can see this kind of beautiful Series 1 with our five killers and our first set of Final Girls. On the side here, we have Lori, who's kind of our de facto mascot Final Girl from the first season. And then we have Hans on the other side, our favorite pig-faced killer. On the top here, you got a little bit of blur about the game. On the top here, Final Girl Series 1. And Oh gosh, this box is heavy when everything is moved into it. On the bottom, I really love this kind of clean explanation of the killers and their locations. So this is the storage box. I have already moved my Series 1 items over here. So when I open this, you're going to see it filled up already. So you can see up here is a very cool VHS, uh, VCR uh, kind of holder for the playmats. The Series 1 box has space for the core box, your five killer feature films, and then the core box and bonus features. And these two boxes are what's new and what I want to show off as far as Series 1 material goes. So let's start with the cast and crew box. And what this is, is a storage option for the final girls, as well as the crows miniature, I guess they're not crows, the birds, terror from above miniatures, as well as space for the feature film. So you can see I already moved in the Terror From Above pack here, as well as all the bird miniatures. So normally these are little tokens, um, but they are now replaced with miniatures. So it's nice, uh, you know, a game like Final Girl that is so thematic, it is really cool to have miniatures to really match that. And so I am glad that we have those uh, fully available now. Up here, you can see there's storage space for each of your, your Final Girls from Series 1. And on the bottom here, there is space for their signature cards. So that is really nice. Um, right now, my signature cards are kind of just scattered all about uh, different boxes. So to have them all consolidated into this box is going to be awesome. And of course, there's a little space here for each of the Final Girl cards, of course. The other cool new box for Series 1 is the Bonus Features box. And so I put my rule book in here, my Series 1 Lauren Scenario book, and then this is incredible. This is such a small thing. And even when I was back in it, I didn't realize this was being added into it. Um, but they added this feature film rule book. And what this does is it collates all of the setup and special rules for every location and for every killer. Cause right now they're kind of little individual pieces of paper. And it's, you know, it was always a little annoying to have to flip back and forth um, to set it up. So it is actually a huge, huge thing in terms of ease of setup to have all of this put together in one book. Uh, particularly, if we look at someone like uh, Dr. Fright here, who has a little bit more of a complicated uh, setup, right? He kind of has two pages here of the, the sleep kind of mechanic. Um, and you would have like two small sheets of paper you're flipping back and forth to have it just in a little booklet here is going to make those complicated killers that much easier to play and kind of refresh yourself on. So this is really small, but I absolutely adore that they added this and I really, really am glad that they did. It really goes a long way in making the game that much more accessible and easy to play. You can also fit your gruesome book, uh, death book here. I fortunately don't have that actually. So right now I'm putting my rule book, my lore scenario book, and my kind of setup guide all in this little box here. So it all fits very, very nicely. So you can see there's a little bit of a, an outline in the back here to kind of suggest where each thing should go. And it looks really, really slick. The other little thing that was added, and I actually don't know where I want to put these yet, is this Series 1 Vehicle Miniatures. And this is going to be replacing the tokens in all of the Series 1 locations with vehicles. So you can see the boat uh, from Camp Happy Trails, the little golf cart from Carnival of Blood, these two from Maple Lane, and the helicopter from Creech Manor. So similar to the birds getting miniatures, just some of the other bigger set piece type things getting miniatures. Again, it goes a long way in helping the whole game come to life. 
So that is from a, a returning customer perspective. That's what I got for series one here. Um, you know, the storage box, the space for the um, player mats, and of course the cast and crew and bonus features. And it does, it, it's nice because um, I kind of just have them haphazardly on a shelf. So to have them all consolidated into one box is really nice. Um, but enough of series one, let's go ahead and move into the new stuff. All right, but here, this is the, uh, the centerpiece, of course, the new series two content. I really like the kind of red purplish color motif that series two has. We have our big bad wolf replacing Hans as the kind of mascot killer, our evil nurse, our kind of Antarctic thing creature, uh, our strange strangers, knock on the door type murderers, and of course our Eva Morth alien. You can see here we have our full lineup of final goals here. We have a couple of notable people like our, our Ellen Ripley type, our Red Riding Hood, our uh, Kurt Russell flamethrower uh, thing person, this dual wieldy lady. Um, so I like this cast of characters. There's a dog, which is cool. Looking at the side here, Red has replaced Lori as our mascot, our kind of feature final girl. I'm curious if the Big Bad Wolf is gonna be the kind of beginner friendly um, killer if you're getting into series two. On the side of the box here, we have our Big Bad Wolf art. So I do like it. The Big Bad Wolf not really tied to any property specifically. I like that there's just kind of a nice generic horror monster here um, that's kind of being showcased. On the back, we got another kind of overlay of uh, what these all look like. Of course, on the bottom, we have the Series 2 killers and the Series 2 locations matching the Series 1 stuff. So a nice uh, cohesive look across both of the series. But let's get this main box top off. And you can see here, I did open it up. I have not unwrapped everything. I have looked at some of the um, ancillary side boxes, but um, the actual feature films I have not had a chance to get into yet. But I do want to show off a couple things here. Let's look at the box of props to start. So this is taking the space of where the core rule book would go in the series one box. Let me move that off to the side for now. Uh, but this is a lot of cool variety and, and, and new things being added to the game. So firstly, we have a couple of little 3D tokens to replace some of the little wooden stuff. So you can see there's a time tracker, um, a bloodlust tracker, and uh, I think this is for terror, the little head on a pike there. We have a totally new mechanic being added into the game through the ultimate dice and signature ability. So there's a whole new set of dice here, and there's also a whole bunch of special signature abilities cards. So you could see on the back here, they all say signature ability or signature action. And these are just gonna be kind of souped up versions and some new, completely new um, actions here. So these are gonna be exciting to mix into the game. And there's a couple of promo final girls here that seem like they specifically work with a couple of the ultimate dice. You see Agnes here, um, she specifically works with the ultimate dice. So they're kind of tied into this uh, new system being added into the game. Um, you know, I think a big complaint against the game is that it is uh, very punishing and difficult. So I'm hoping that these ultimate dice um, give you a little bit more leeway if you're struggling. You can kind of lean on them a little bit to allow you to, to survive, especially the early game um, can be really punishing. Um, well, what else do we have in here? We also have some replacements to our cardboard health trackers. So I'll throw these in the core box most likely, along with these tokens and then the ultimate dice. Um, but I do need to read through the rule books. It kind of goes over how to integrate each of these, how these new final girls work, as well as the new components and how the ultimate dice. So I got to read through this and uh, kind of determine, do I like kind of the hardcore final girl version? Um, or do I add this in and then turn up the difficulty? Uh, I'm excited. Again, more options to play, the better. So I'm excited to see this box of props. Um, this is also, this paper kind of comes out. So I might, I was debating where to put my vehicles. So I might put them in this box of props here since this kind of paper insert kind of comes out and I might just keep some loose miscellaneous things in here. Since a lot of the things like the health tokens, um, I think I'm gonna put in my core box, but Let's get the prop box out of here. I'm gonna put it back in the big box. Um, so let's actually, let's pull out the five new uh, feature films here. And we're just gonna take a quick look at them. Um, I am gonna do a kind of volume two of my buying guide. 
And so that's what I'm gonna really go into detail, um, but I just wanna take a quick look and just give some initial impressions here uh, for each of the new feature films. So here we have the Ratchet Lady and her location is the Wolf Asylum. So obviously this is invoking a little bit of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And uh, honestly, a lot of the monster design kind of gave me Silent Hill vibes. Um, but I'm curious what the exact kind of inspiration for the, the asylum is. Here we have who I suspect is gonna be our new kind of introductory character with um, the Big Bad Wolf and Red in Storybook Woods. Um, I really like the map that I've seen for this. It's almost like a hand-drawn kind of storybook map. So that's gonna be real cool. The Intruders. So The Intruders is another kind of multi-killer box. And I'm very excited because Geppetto is my favorite series one killer. Does it have another killer that kind of works in multiples? Um, looks to be really cool. I'm excited about this one. And I like the cottage. I really like that setting um, for a lot of the killers. I think it has a lot of potential. So this is one I'm, I'm very excited about. And here we have our two kind of 80s classics. We have the organism at our Antarctic station 2891, very much invoking John Carpenter as the thing. So I'm excited. I, I know there is kind of like a hidden, are, is your teammate, are the people around you monsters or are they the, uh, you know, can you trust them? So I'm really interested to see how they're going to capture the feeling of paranoia in the thing in a, a solo board game. So this is really uh, an exciting one. I realize I'm saying that about all of them, but they're all so freaking cool. And of course we have the Evo Morph on, uh, on the USS Conrad, our alien inspired uh, evolving type thing. So the cool thing I saw about this guy is that he actually has three different stages. So I kind of mentioned a big complaint against the game that I've read and heard about is how difficult the early game is. So having a killer that starts off weak and having the ability to scale it up as you get more powerful sounds really cool. So this is a, another one I'm interested. Maybe this might be a good first box. So I'm, you know, that's what I'm gonna be looking for as I play through them and kind of designing a buyer's guide is what's most important to you? Is it the theme? Is it the uh, monster? Is it the approachability? What do you value the most? So I think the next thing I wanna look at is the player mats. So there are a new set of player mats for series two, um, kind of made specifically for these killers. So as we kind of get these packed away, if you guys are enjoying this video, consider liking and subscribing. Um, I love to hear feedback from you guys. I love to hear if you're excited to play this. I realize more and more folks are getting this. So I would love to hear what you think about your Final Girl series two. If you're just getting into the game, or if you're just playing through series one, I would love to hear what you guys think about it. So let's go ahead and move into the Series 2 game mat set. So you can see here it works really nicely in this VHS um, set here. So we'll take these two out. Here we have our killer board. Um, so you can see there's some new spaces here for special feature film cards. So folks like Dr. Fright where you kind of have the boiler room, you can kind of throw them here. We have our Dark Powers. This is new as well, the um, kind of vignette area. I really like this, so making the zombies and the crows a little bit easier to play is gonna be nice. We have some new spaces for some other special spaces. I'm not sure what these would be used for. I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be for series two, of course. Here, I really like that they added a new bonus deck. So something like Maple Lane in series one where you have four item decks. You used to always have to put the third one kind of like awkwardly above the board. So having a little auxiliary space here is very appreciated. Uh, the location board is, is pretty much where it was. You can see setup was moved up here and they also uh, made an extra space. I believe there's only three event spaces in series one. Now there's four, so that's really nice. And you know, the, the Final Girl logo kind of took up a big chunk in the corner. So they kind of moved it um, on the vertical here. So that's really nice. I feel like there is a, the space here is used a lot smarter and more efficiently. And I, you could see that as they've kind of grown from series one to series two, it's, it's really been refined quite a bit. So I'd like to compare the series one boards and see if there's actually any benefit. I may just switch completely to the series two boards. So let's take a quick look at the final girl. Oh, this one's fa fairly different. So you could see this terror track is much smaller on the series two board here. Um, still totally functional and I, you know, assuming that the rest of the space is added for some action cards. I, I think it's a good move to make this a little smaller. 
the kind of picture of the dice are quite a bit different. They're a little bit brighter, almost like fluorescent in the, in the Series 2 uh, Terror Track. Not, not too different, though. Um, here we have our Final Girl Health Tracker. Our play area items are pretty much the same. Items in the backpack are the same. There's an extra row here for those signature special action cards, if you remember what we saw in the prop box. Uh, this is new here. Uh, they have moved the terror card from the killer board over to the final girl board. Um, again, I think they have balanced out the space. Also, you'll notice the final girl logo isn't even on this board at all. So I really feel like they're getting a lot of real estate out of these player mats, uh, much more than the first. Um, of course, they are the you know physically the same size, but I think the space on these is used way way smarter. Um, okay, let's look at the last two items here in our series two box that we we kind of looked over, which is the cast and crew box. So this is similar to what we had in series one, where you're going to see there's spaces for all your final girls, for your vignette pack, and the zombies. So the new vignette for series two is a a zombie invasion. So we have our single zombie. And we have our horde of zombies. So similar to how the birds in the first series go from one bird to kind of like a pack of three birds, the zombies are doing something similar. Um, and of course we have space for all our final girls and for their signature items. In the bonus feature box, we have space again for our lore book, for our feature film rule book, and for our gruesome death book. Also included are some extra finale cards for all of the Series 2 killers. So you can see, ooh, that was a cool. I like it, I like it. So I'm, I'm excited to see what those portraits look like with the finale and dark power cards. You can see we have another lore scenario book. Um, I did flip through this and it looks like all of the Series 2 stuff sticks with Series 2 location. So there's no scenarios specifically using series one locations, right? It's all pretty much contained. So if you just got series two, you have a full experience there. You do need the core box, of course, but all the series stu two stuff kind of plays nicely with each other. And again, we have the same feature film setup book for all the new killers, um, instead of using those little sheets of paper. So again, I absolutely adore that they did that. Really, really happy about that. And then the last thing are the miniatures. So here we have the full set of miniatures. Um, I'm going to actually do kind of a full look at them when I do my buying guide, but you can see these all look gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm really excited to, to open these up and I'll, I'll get them all in their, you know, correct boxes soon. Um, and then the last thing we have is our vehicles for series two. So let's see what we got here. So it looks like we have a super loader for our space station, a gurney for our hospital, a like a snow truck thing for our um, snow station, Antarctic station, a little raft for the storybook world, a Arctic helicopter again for the thing, and then this funny little racer scooter that uh, goes to the, the cottage. <laughs> this, I, I'm sure it's the same in series one, but the scale of these is funny when uh, the bulldozer is the same size as the, um, as the gurney. Um, you know, not that this game has to be super realistic. I, I will take uh, the cool scale of the miniature on the map over realism any day. So I like that the vehicles have some nice weight to them. But I think that's, that is just about everything we got for series one and season two. Again, this is just kind of a real brief overview. If you're interested, if you're a series one person getting back into it, if you're just getting into series two, do remember that this series two set does not come with a core box. You'd still need that separately to make all the rest of this work. So do keep that in mind. Um, but you know, everything series two is kind of self-contained. You could just get series two and, and play all of that or get these a la carte. Um, but again, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview. If you have any questions, if you were thinking about getting Final Girl, if you have any questions about any of the specific feature films, please do let me know. And please, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. My intention is to play through all of this and kind of create a volume two of my buying guide to help give you an idea of what are the mechanics in each of these, what might you like as you kind of traverse through the Final Girl world. So again, I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more videos like this. 
I also have a Twitter and Instagram where I post thoughts and photos of games I'm playing throughout the week, and I hope to see you there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.